Peter, is it possible to sell your soul to the devil? Is it really possible? We hear celebrities and uh, uh, rich people, world leaders and people like that, they, they have sold their souls to the devil. Is it, is it really possible? Now, in the fanciful tale of the Dr. Faustus, a man makes a deal with the devil in exchange for his uh, body and soul. And the man is to receive some supernatural power and pleasures for 24 years. Now, the devil agrees to the, to the trade, okay? The devil agrees to the trade. And Dr. Foster's enjoys the pleasures of sin for a season. But his doom is sealed at the end of 24 years. Foster's attempts to thwart the devil's plans, but he meets a fightful demise nonetheless. Now, this legend <laughs> works well as a morality tale and as a metaphor for the wages of sin. But of course, the details of this plot are not uh, biblical. Now, you have to understand that um, the Bible has no instance of a person selling his soul, okay? To Satan and it never implies that making a bargain with the devil is possible I'm going to give you some some things that uh, the Bible says that reveal what actually can can you know what Satan can do okay it reveals some things about Satan now we have to understand one thing okay that Satan Satan has power enough to oppose even the angels <laughs> to fight with the angels yes he has power to do that remember in uh, jude chapter 1 verse 9 it says yet michael the angel this is talking about uh when uh, moses is uh, died yet michael the archangel when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of moses does not bring against him a railing accusation but said the lord rebuked thee you see the archangel had to seek power from God to rebuke Satan because Satan has power to oppose even the angels. So he can definitely oppose, you know, a lot. Make all those op opposing, uh, you know, things. And also we see the same also happening in the book of Daniel uh, 10 uh, verse 12. He's also talking about the same thing. See here. Then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy works were hard. And I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. And uh, one and twenty days, twenty-one days, the demons were withstanding. They were fighting the angels, you know, so that the, the prayers of, uh, of Daniel cannot be answered. But lo, Michael... One of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. You see, the Bible is explaining that uh, there is no deal you can do with Satan, but Satan is powerful that he can fight. He can fight back. He has power enough to oppose even the angels. You see, like what I've just read to you, Daniel, the, he, he already there was uh, what he had prayed and the answer was coming but for 21 days it was held until god sent the archangel michael to come and give some help on the same now that's one thing you have to understand then the other thing that you have to get is that uh, satan satan seeks to deceive by masquerading masquerading as an angel of light he always pretends to be an angel of light. I have a friend of mine who was talking about that uh, he prays until he sees light and uh, somebody says, oh, I saw Jesus. And all those kind of fairy tales that you always hear on YouTube that, hey, I, I saw God, I saw Jesus, he came into my room. Remember, the Bible tells us that Satan masquerades or is transformed into an angel of light. He can pretend. And this is very, very true. These are some of the things that he can do. 2 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14, the Bible talks about this, see, it says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Huh? Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. 
So, Satan can transform himself into an angel of light and also his ministers. Do you know Satan has ministers even in the church? He has ministers in the world. He has spiritual ministers. He has uh, ministers who are fleshly right now. So those are some of the things he can do. And also, you have to understand something else. That God has provided the means of defending ourselves against Satan attacks. You may say, okay, Satan, if he's that powerful, if all these things, how can we defend ourselves? He has already provided the means. And this one you read in Ephesians. Ephesians uh, 6, 11. Ephesians 6, 11. See the means which God has provided. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Okay? And of course, he explains all that. Let me just show you by uh, a picture here. The armor of God. We have to put in a helmet, helmet of salvation, a breastplate of righteousness, a shield of faith, belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, the feet which are protected by the gospel. So this is the whole arm of God. You have to make sure that you're on that. That's, that's how you're going to protect yourself. You cannot protect yourself by carnal means. You, you cannot fight the spirit with carnal, you know, uh, guns and uh, swords. and it, it doesn't work like that. It has to be a spiritual battle for a spiritual battle. You understand? But then, another good thing about this is that uh, Satan's power is limited by God's will. God has limited Satan's power to some point. Okay? Think about, um, think about Job. Okay? Job... 1 in the book of job 1 uh, verses 10 okay we can read to, to 12 see about this has thou not made an hedge about him this is satan speaking and telling god he wants to go and uh, you know tempt job has thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side thou has blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increasing the land but put Put forth thine hand now and touch all that he has and he will cast thee to thy face. This is Satan trying to accuse Job. You see, Satan is a, the accuser of man. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself, not put forth thine hand. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord. So God is telling him, It's okay, your power, go and do whatever you want to do. But don't touch his life. So you see, Satan's power is limited by God's will. God is the one who can say you can do up to this point or you can do up to that point. And of course, the Bible tells us again in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10.13, uh, it tells us also about the, the limiting of Satan's power. It says, there has no temptation taken you, but such is as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will, will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. So, there is no big temptation which uh, Satan can bring to you and tell you, ah, uh, this one is be beyond you. No. Even what is happening in the world right now, you know, there are people who say, oh God, no, this one I just have to accept because there is no other way. No, the Bible says there is no temptation which has overtaken you. If you pray and tell God, please show me a way out, he's going to show you a way out. He's going to show you a way out, how to escape, okay? He will show you how to escape. So don't sit down there and say, oh, my temptation is so big. No, God has made sure that there is always a way of escape for his people. Okay. Now, something else you have to understand about Satan is that uh, he's the god of this world. That that is uh, spoken in the Bible. And as the god of this world, Satan has dominion over those who live without Christ in the world. Remember, the Bible says you have your father, the devil, because you are a sinner from the beginning and you have never accepted Christ. You have always been like that. So if you have never accepted Christ, you have your father the devil. And the devil has dominion over you. Unless you 
agree to God. You have to understand this in Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians four four. Uh, Second Corinthians uh, four four. It tells us about this. It says, "In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine." unto them the god of this world who is that god of this world god with a small letter g is satan he's blinded the minds of people here okay he's blinded the people are you blinded by the world are you blinded by the lust of the flesh lust of the eyes and the pride of life you want to be you know th that's exactly what satan is all about to try and make you like god and make tell you you'll be like god and you'll be big and you will do this and this and he blinds you to the truth which is in the gospel no wonder the bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free once you understand your all purpose on earth you will not be chasing after satan chasing after money fame uh chasing after you know cloud some people to you know good things of this world and lifestyles and all those kind of things those are just things that satan is blinding people and many are very much blinded people wake up every morning thinking about how to make the next uh, coin only not forgetting that uh, god has said he'll provide for all your needs if you're a child of god he will always give you simple ways to make money even at the comfort of your home but because uh, you're just any other person out there in the world, remember what he said. Whosoever will not work, let him not eat. Whosoever is anyone. But if you're a child of God, the Bible says, if you people being evil, you know how to give good things unto your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you? So if you're out there and you are whosoever, then keep on. Keep on running up and down. But if you're a child of God, he will provide for you. You'll not be like those kind of people who work every day and it's like the money is getting into, you know, some uh, pockets with the holes. You ask yourself, I worked every day, I work every day, but I don't see the fruits of my labor. It's because you've been blinded by Satan to keep on chasing. It's like you're chasing something which is, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, it's also running. So Satan is the god of this world. And, uh, he has dominion over those who live without Christ in this world. So, something else you have to understand is that uh, there are those who suffer under direct satanic control. Okay? Such as the, remember the young medium of Philippi? You remember these ones? These, these people in Acts 16, 16. Acts 16, uh, 16. Remember this? We can read to 19. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. These are people who are directly possessed. Those who have a direct satanic control. Okay, The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, These, these men are the servants of the Most High, which show us the way of salvation. You see, this woman was possessed and she could be able to divine. She had the spirit of divination which is an evil spirit, to say uh, things which are ahead, which is unlike humanity. So she was possessed. And did she many days. She always did this for so many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned against and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And uh, he came out of her the same hour. You see? You see? And let me just finish here. And uh, when the master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and threw them into the marketplace and to the rulers and, and, and so forth. So you understand that there are people who are completely in chains of Satan, like the people who are demon-possessed and things like that. And of course, there's also another one called Elimas, if you can remember in the book of Acts. Acts. Acts um, 13.8, if I'm not wrong, 13.8. 13.8, it also speaks about Elimas. But Elimas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. You see, Elimas the sorcerer. Now, people who are sorcerers and people like that, these are people who are already in satanic chains. They have already been bound. They are bound so much. But still, remember, each of these 
examples, the power of God still prevails over Satan's slavery. So you can say, this person is like sold his soul to the devil. No, I don't think something like that. Because the power of God still can prevail over Satan's slavery. In fact, in fact, do you remember Simon the sorcerer? Simon the sorcerer? Hmm? He is offered a chance to repent. Now, this is a guy who is a sorcerer. He's already in chains of darkness. But uh, he's offered a chance to repent. See, Acts 8, uh, 22. See here. So, if you're saying somebody can sell his soul to the devil and there's no repentance, look at this. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So this is Simon, the sorcerer, who is being told to repent. So it means there's chance for him to be able to be saved. So for those people you look and you say, ah, this person already sold his soul to the devil, he cannot uh, change, and it's done, it's done. The only thing is that Satan has control over them right now because they have not repented. The moment they will repent, then it's done. So obviously, there had to be no irrevocable selling of Simon's soul. Even if Simon was a sorcerer, he was a demon possessed and all those kind of things, there is no place where he had an irrevocable selling of his soul. Are, are, are you understanding this? So there is no place where he sold his soul. The Bible does not say that. But of course, remember, without Christ, we are all under condemnation. If you are without Christ, you will be condemned. You will be condemned of death. Because the Bible tells us in uh, Romans, in the book of Romans uh, 3.23, Romans 3.23, the Bible tells us that uh, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. So if we have all sinned, what is going to happen? Every sinner is condemned. Okay? Every sinner is condemned to hellfire. Because we are all sinners. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. And uh, before, before we were saved, we were all in that bondage. Everyone, everyone was in that bondage. So we all deserve to go to hell, to be thrown into hell. But uh, as John 5.19 says, let, 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 let me show you John uh, 5.19 that I can explain to you. John uh, 5.19. The Bible tells us something here. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. Anyone who has repented and come uh, to the knowledge of Christ is of God. But any other person who is not of God, then what happens to him? He lies in wickedness and he lies in condemnation. Okay? So, we should praise the Lord that we have a new master. And this new master is our God. It's not Satan who has been holding us. Okay? And uh, this new master can be able to break every chain with the power of his blood. Okay? Every chain of sin, every chain of uh, uh, being held, and every chain can be broken. Okay? Because the Bible says in uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, verses 9, we can read to 11. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, or idolaters, or uh, idolaters, and adulterers, or effeminate or abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves or covetous or drunkards or revelers or extensioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. As such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. You see? And also the Bible says again in Mark, in the book of Mark, as I wind up 5 uh, verses 1, <clears throat> We can read uh, down there a little bit. And there came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gardenes. Remember this? Some demon-possessed person being released by Jesus. You know, I want to show you that there is no deal. There is no deal that you can say, this person is already sealed now. There is no way 
he can be able to be redeemed. He sold his soul. There is nothing like that. Satan just wants to steal, to lie to you so that he can make you know that there is no other way. Even those people who you think they have sold their souls to the devil. How many people you had, they were Satanists. And right now they are preaching the word of God. How many? There are so many out there. So don't think that somebody, if he sold his soul and he stayed there and he never repented, then uh, that's it. He will go to hell. But if he repents and changes, then uh, that chain can be broken because the Bible says there is power in the blood. Now let's continue. And they came over unto the uh, and they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of Gardenes. And when he was come out of the ship, Jesus. Immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Why? Because we don't fight against flesh and blood. So nobody could be able to bind him. Uh, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. <laughs> you see this? Because it's all about spiritual warfare. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, son, thou, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Now these are the evil spirits speaking. They're saying, please don't torment us. So it's not the man. You see, we, we try to fight carnal, uh, uh, spiritual things with carnal means. We try to bind people with chains, thinking it's all about chains which can bind this person. But it's a spiritual warfare. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. So those were demons calling themselves Legion. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. There were some pigs out there, okay, feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter them. And for which Jesus gave them leave. And immediately, of course, Jesus told them to leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And that and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and the country. And they went out to see what it was done and, uh, and uh, things like that. So we see this story explaining, of course, let me finish with verse 15. And they came to Jesus and, and uh, see him that was possessed of the devil and uh, had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. You see... The blood of Jesus can break any chain. That is someone who was totally demon-possessed. He was uh, cutting himself with stones. He was, uh, you know, living in the tombs and uh, running up and down. And nobody could chain him. Because he was already chained with demons and things like that. The people thought probably this guy has sold his soul to the devil things like that. So he cannot be redeemed. But what redeemed him? <laughs> Jesus. So there is power. There is power in Christ. And right now, even more, in the blood of Jesus, because he already died for our sins. So, when you talk about, is it really possible to sell your soul to the devil? I don't think so, because uh, the Bible says, as long as you're alive, you can give your life to Christ. As long as you're living, you can be saved. And all these kind of tales that we hear, and uh, so and so did what, and they bargained with the devil, and they did a deal, and things like that. It's okay, yes, you can do those kind of deals. You can um, say, yeah, I'm, I'm giving Satan this and this for this and this fame and what, what, what. But remember, the more you stay, the more you keep on uh, uh, doing the things of Satan, okay, and you stay there, the more he will bind you. And when you are bound, unless God has some mercy on you or uh, something happens, it, it is also, also not really easy for you to and bind yourself from that because you don't even understand remember that guy who was living in the tombs and jesus met him it is only because jesus was coming to that area that he was able to be unchained 
and the demons could leave him. But uh, think about it. If people could have bound him with chains and uh, tried to take him where Jesus is, he could have broken them. So it's unless by the favor of God he comes your way, it is possible if you get deep into Satanism, it's very hard to get out because it needs the power of God. God to come and maybe people to pray that at least Jesus will pass you away. But all in all, remember, you still can be saved. It's only that it's a bit hard because nobody can lead you and tell you, let's go to church or come and, you know, salvation is all about believing. How do you believe and you're already possessed with things? So it takes the hand of God to take you from that pit. So you have to make sure you're also very careful not to get into satanic agreements and things like that. But still, if you're in there or you know a friend who is there, no, just pray for them that Jesus one day will pass near them because they can be saved. Okay, they can be saved. If Simon and Sorcerer were saved and that girl was saved and many others were saved who were possessed, then it is very, very true. Even the damsel was saved. Make sure that you avoid hellfire because hellfire is coming. Okay, but Jesus can break all those kind of chains. How can he break those chains? Through the gospel. You have to understand the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how and why Jesus had to die. Jesus died for your sins, was buried and rose again, as is written in the scriptures. And he did all this so that you can be saved. If you believe in that and you believe in him, then you're saved. Just confess to him what you believe. Tell him, Jesus, I now understand and I now believe that you died for my sins. You are buried and rose again, as is written in the scriptures. Once you do that, my friends, you are already saved. And Satan will have no dominion over you because you are a child of God. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you have been able to understand. Share this video to other people and also you can uh, subscribe to watch more videos because we post new videos every day to edify the body of Christ. God bless you. Have a good, good time.